Joining me in studio, a panel of leading Catholics, Mark Tui, a noted attorney here in Washington, Monsignor John Insler, he's CEO and president of Catholic Charities. Our own Andrea Rohn, former WUSA 9 anchor, a member of the Catholic University Board of Trustees, and S. Catherine Allen, longtime member of St. Augustine Parish. Let's go down the line. Catherine, we're gonna start with you. What did you expect, what did you need to hear from this summit? I really expected and needed to hear zero tolerance that we are gonna shed the light, it's gonna be over this entire situation, and there's gonna be zero tolerance, it's done. Right. And I'm not sure I totally got that. Andrea? I agree with Catherine, I wanted zero tolerance. I did not get that at all. I, in fact, I mentioned to Bruce that I thought it was lip service. Uh, these are crimes that are being committed. It's not, the, the Vatican is not an embassy, a diplomatic sanctuary here in the States and across the world. If you commit a crime, you should be punished for that crime. And I wanted to hear that kind of zero tolerance as well as uh, compassion and understanding for the victims and what they've gone through. Monsignor Inslee, what, what did you need to hear and, and, and the other priests, you know, you know, the good priests out there, what, what did you need to hear from the summit? I think the hopes were that we'd have a real clear direction for our church, a real clear commitment to saying zero tolerance, but also that we're going to try to deal with this in a global way. I think the good news was this is the first time we gathered as a global church, a global church to discuss an issue that's not just the United States or in Europe, it's all over the world. That's good, but I think we just didn't move fast enough or far enough, so we need action, and frankly, we need it right now. Yeah, Mark? Well, I did, Bruce, I did hear reference to a new phrase that I hope has some meaning, and that's one strike and you're out. But I really expected, along with many of my fellow Catholics, to hear specific proposals to deal with the future of this church in terms of formation, selection, training of men and women to serve in the ministry. Now that may be coming, and if it is, maybe this is the end of the beginning rather than the beginning of the end but we need to hear specific. Mark, let me ask you this. You're, you're the lawyer up here, and, and the Pope talked about developing legislation for the church, okay? We have legislation in all of these jurisdictions. Let's just start here in the United States. That we know what's legal and what isn't legal. Uh, are you confident that the laws here will be applied to the clergy? Because we've seen evidence time and time again that they haven't been applied. Well, look at the examples that have come out in the last few weeks about hierarchy the bishops abusing uh, men and women in the church, bishops not paying attention to claims for cries for help. The legislation is there, it has not been enforced. Right. Mm -hmm. Monsignor, the good priest out there, how do they go about doing their jobs? Uh, you, you're given the day of your ordination, you know, the high ground, moral authority that nobody else, none of the rest of us have. How do they maintain that? How do they go about doing their jobs? How, how do the parishioners view them? There's, well, I think most parishioners still view us as their parish priest. As a priest they know from homilies, they know from sick calls, they know from baptisms and weddings. But lots of people who are maybe not quite so involved, or maybe just occasionally come to church, view us in the same way that many others do, as a possible sexual abuser, as someone who might hurt their child, someone who might offend them. And I think for a lot of us, it's a, it's a pretty disheartening thing. Particularly, I'd say for the young guys, the young priests, the guys just ordained. I haven't ordained 46 years. You know, you get toughened up after 46 years, but if you're two years ordained or one year ordained, how's that feel to be in a new group of people just getting started and finding out that leaders of your own church, leaders of our own diocese, have done things that are clearly inappropriate yeah. and wrong and sinful? How's that work? Yeah. Uh, moving forward, Andre, what, what do you need to see? You know, I'd like to see more women involved. I think women could make a difference. Uh, different perspective. It's the mother church, so where are the mothers? Where are the women who could be involved in this? You want them as priests? Yeah, why not? Why not? I have gone to services where I've seen women in the pulpit in the United Methodist Church, in the Episcopal Church, and they have a voice that s touches your heart. And we have male priests to do the same, but we're excluding 50% of the people in the pews. I totally agree. Why not have women as part of this solution? Kathy, what do you want to see? You know, I, I've argued about this particular point a lot, but it really does, you're talking about disheartening and, and things that are, are painful. When folks walk up to me and say, well, how can you be Catholic? 
and I, you know, I've thought a lot about it. I've argued with my non-Catholic, including my husband, about this. But at the end of the day, these bad actors and these sinners, they do not define me. They do not define my faith. They do not define what it is to be Catholic, I think. And so I'd like there to be some understanding about that in terms of who we are as Catholics, but also not have that that concept diminish the seriousness of what's happening and, and that we need to deal with it directly, both on the, the victim side as well as the ones who have committed the, the Yeah, let's say we got to wrap this up. Let me ask you guys to weigh in on this, or, or at least a couple of you to weigh in on this. I still think we're at the tip mm. of, of the scandal, not at the end of oh, it, okay? No. There are a lot of countries that, that haven't true. reported in yet. You know, there are a lot of dioceses right here in the United States that haven't reported in. Monsignor, am I correct? I mean, is that your feeling? My feeling is yes. I think we've done a better job here now since 2002 with our, our statements from the bishops, but we've got a long way to go, long way to go. And are you prepared for that, more? I'm prepared for more, but you were talking about what's happening in the United States. I was reading that uh, bishops and cardinals in Asia, in Africa, Latin America, especially Africa and Asia, this is somebody else's problem. Yes, yes. It's not even their problem. It's all of our problems. Absolutely. Right? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got you now, so I've got to bring you back, too, okay? <laughs> got your cell numbers. Thanks a lot. <laughs>